I guess if I had to title this message today, I would call it, it's time for the weeping and the warring mothers to arise in the earth realm. Let me get my computer right. I'm so thankful for what God is doing right now, and I'm honored to run with women. You know, um, God began to speak to me this word about the warring and the weeping. And Pastor Melissa hit on a lot of that today. I'm going to piggyback. I want to start my scripture verse for today is Jeremiah 9, verse 1. I'm going to read from Jeremiah 9, and then I'm going to pray. Jeremiah starts off like this. Oh, that my head were like waters and my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Down in verse 17, it says, this is what the Lord of the army says. In other words, this is what the, the chief, what the man in charge says. Consider and call forth the mourning women that they may come. Call forth the skillful women that they may come. Have them hurry and take up a wailing for us so that our eyes may shed tears and our eyelids flow with water. For a voice is wail, a voice wailing is heard from Zion. How devastated we are. We are put to great shame. We have abandoned the land because they have torn down our homes. Doesn't that sound familiar? Now hear the word of the Lord, you women. And let your ears receive the word of his mouth. Teach your daughters a wailing. And have every woman teach their neighbor a song of mourning. For death has come up through our windows. It has entered our palaces to eliminate the children from the streets. Man, if 2021 was in a book, I think it would be in Jeremiah 9. For the young, and to eliminate the young men from the public squares. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this message today. I thank you, God, that you'd give me all the anointing to carry out what I believe the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church in this hour. I pray that you would put your fire inside of these women. Oh, it's already in them. Just increase it, God. Increase it, God. And help me to communicate what the Lord is saying in this hour. All right, so we just read Jeremiah, right? So we see Jeremiah the prophet. He's in a state of mourning and travail over Judah. Judah's about to be sieged because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. They were a rebellious people. And God was allowing them to be sieged by their enemies. You would think that Jeremiah the prophet would call forth an army of priests. Or that it would call forth the anointed men. But instead, Jeremiah says this. In other words, the answer to the crisis is tears, not opinions, not facts, not stats, tears. God is saying, Judah is, Israel is, is in such a bad place, and because they don't really know where they are, I'm going to have to hire some professional mourners to teach them how to weep. In other words, since you won't weep willingly, I'll have to hire these people over there to teach you how to weep. So these women, they were paid actors. You know, God's not looking for paid actors. God wants to break our hearts open with his heart for what burns on his heart in the earth realm. God wants to produce a travail in us. God wants to produce a weeping in us. So these mourners, they would go out and these women would wail really loud. And it would cause the other people to weep. In other words, I see this picture of women as the weeping, warring, wailing mothers, weeping for their children. You know, 2020 started off so rough for many of us. It's by a show of hands. We had a lot of breakthrough, but we had a lot of trouble. We saw a lot of breakthrough, but we also saw so many things happen. We can look at the racial tension. We can look at COVID. We can look at all these things. But if I had to look back over 2020, what I believe was considered a flashpoint moment is when George Floyd died. Now, don't shoot me because I'm not here to get political. No matter where you stand on the aisle, we can agree as mothers. There's something about a grown man crying out in the streets for his mama. Right? It's not, a, it's like, we can agree on that. Here's this grown man. Mind you, his mother had died several years prior to that. 
And what that says to me and what that represents is a motherless and a fatherless generation on the streets weeping for their mothers. Where are the mothers in the earth realm? Child, child psychologists say, and, and uh, Terry would probably agree with this, that the lack of nurturing in mothers causes certain behavioral problems in children. The first one is negative feelings, poor self-esteem, poor behavioral issues, problem social relationships, emotional imbalances, eating disorders, anxiety, and health issues. All these things from the lack of mothering. We talk a lot about spiritual fathers, and God knows we need spiritual fathers. But God is saying, I need my Deborahs, and I need my mothers just as much. See, we're over here arguing whether women pr can preach or not, and in the Middle East, the fastest growing church is women. So God needs his mothers to see a generation set free. Francis, Sandra, Francis Frangipane he said that he was praying about the Jesus people movement. And as he was studying on the Jesus people movement, he said, Lord, I didn't see any citywide revivals prior to the Jesus people movement. So he began to pray and ask the Lord. And the Lord said to him, the Lord rebuked him. And the Lord said, Francis, there was a praying movement. He said there was a million mothers crying out for their children on the streets. There was a million mothers weeping and wailing from all denominations in unity and desperation. God heard the cries of believing mothers. His heart was so touched. And as a result, multitudes of sinful kids found repentance and salvation. Come on, multitudes found repentance and salvation. This is the army that God desires to release again today. But now with more vision, with more power, with more of the Holy Spirit, and with the support of the men. So in other words, during the, every move of God was preceded by prayer. But can I tell you that the Jesus people movement was a million mothers crying out because they got tired of seeing their sons and daughters on opiate and, and, and crack and LSD. And they began to pray for something to spiritually break over the nation. Can't God do it again? Will God do it again? Does God want to do it again? Say, do it again, God. Do it again, God. Do it again, God. Why not me? Why not now? If not, when? Do it again, God. This isn't just stories we read about in the Bible. This isn't just a, period, a time in history. Listen, all of the prophets, even through the New Testament, long to see the days that we are actually standing in. They long to see this hour. Listen, your life is not an accident. You were truly born for such a time as this. Do it again, God. All of the women, every woman in this room, especially the ones over 50, there's a revival with your name on it. Do not retire. It's time for you to refire. It's not just for the 20-year-olds or the 30-year-olds or the 40-year-olds. God is saying, I'm going to put a new fire on the inside of my women. You know why? Because there's something in you that we so desperately need in this generation. Just because we have hashtags and social media does not mean we have power. We don't, that does not mean we have character. That does not mean we have integrity. I'm telling you, listen, there's some battles that you fought that I have not lived through yet. We need the older generation. I'm here to tell you, mamas, we need what you have on the end. We put a demand on the anointing of God on your life. You know, I was sitting with Pastor Trisha. We were with my pastor. We were having dinner. And as she began to open up her mouth, my whole body began to burn on my hand. I said, oh, my God, my hands are on fire. I just sat down to have pizza. I'm like, Jesus, this is some anointed pizza. Good night. Or whatever we were eating. And her, but sitting between them, I'm like, oh, God, help me, help me. And I'm sitting with her. And I heard the Lord say, this is the kind of faith on the earth that I'm looking for. And she began to tell me these stories of how God moved in her time. She told me one story where she went to, is it okay to share this? She went to visit her sister and, and her sister, she wanted to pray for her or, or somebody. I don't want to get in trouble. See, I'm going home after this. I got a car ride. 
and, and if, this, if I'm wrong, just come up here and correct me. But she's telling the story, and her sister, she wants to pray. They're fighting at the door. Her sister's sick in her body. She goes, I want to pray for you. Her sister says, no, I don't want you to pray for you. And she's punching, and they're going at it, and they're going at it. But then when her sister gets to the doctor the next day, is this right? She goes to the doctor because it was because of cancer. Yeah, there you go. And she goes to the doctor, get the surgery, and she's completely healed. She's completely healed. Come on. She's totally healed. And the Lord said to Havilah, would you have contended like that? And she began to tell me stories after stories. And the Lord said, listen, women, older women, you've got to tell the stories. You've got to teach the generation about faith and raising the dead and laying hands on the sick. You've got to put faith on the inside of us. Tell the old, old stories. Tell the old, old stories. Come on, I know you've got stories on the inside of you. I know you've got battle scars and battle wounds. Some of you shouldn't even be in this room today. If it had not been for the Lord, where who is on our side? Where 